Hi everyone, welcome back. If you want to help me and support me, please press like and subscribe. Ratios, it's one thing to do a bunch of ratios, but then you get to a test and you start getting mixed up in the different circumstances. Let's have a look at the first one. 60 and 30, one of the things I talk about, you can go divide by 10, or if there's zero here and zero there, I can just cross them out and they become six to three. Now look at what's left with the six and the three. They're on the three, the six, the nine. I keep talking about your three times table will turn up all three of these. So three and the six goes two, and three and the three goes one. So I need a fairly quick revision one. If you want to learn more about this, go back to the previous videos and the playlist. Now what do I do if I got halves? I know if I got halves, if I double this side, I double that side, and the halves will disappear. So let's have a look what's happened. Two threes are six, and the half of one, or two lots of a half, most people are okay. Some people have to think of multiply the tops and multiply the bottoms. So the tops will say one times two is two, and the bottoms will say two times, and there's a one under here. So if that works for your brain, it's a two over two. Now, let's say you're happy enough though, you can just go two lots of a half is one. So either way, whichever way you want to think, and now we're at the smallest whole numbers that work for both of them. Now 1.2, got a decimal, I always talk about we jump the decimal. So of course we can talk about we're timesing by 10. And over here, a lot of people have to write the point zero, and then they can make it more obvious to jump the decimal. So if this one moves one decimal, that one moves that one decimal. If you want to think about it as times 10, that's all okay if you do that. So this one becomes a 12, and that one becomes a 20. Then you've got both even numbers, and if they're both even, a lot of people will see that's more than even, you can go four into each of them. But let's just go even. Two into that goes six, or half of 12 is six, and half of 20 is 10. They're still both even, watch out when they're both even. You can still go again, two into six goes three, and two into 10 goes five, and we're in the smallest possible numbers that we can have that can't be simplified further. Well, my battery went flat in the middle of that last video. So all I've done is it's days later when I get back to these circumstances where I could record it. So I'm picking up from where I was on this revision mixture. Just put the two together, it'll be all nice and easy. One and a half to one and a third tends to be the hardest one for a lot of people. Once you have a mixed fraction, it does make people's brains up. I can talk about lots of things to explain it. I can talk about, well, one and a half, but you can go watch fraction videos. And I'm just gonna go shortcut on this. I put a little red arrow there. I've been doing it for years and it helps people to remember and I found it made a difference for a lot of students that they go two times by the one, which is two, and add the one is three and you get this three on two. So we're turning this back into just a fraction now. There's another way to think about it. How many halves are in one hole? And most people are okay to say in the, there's two halves in one hole, but that's two halves and another half makes three halves. If that's never sunk in, Hopefully it, takes, hopefully it does this time. This one, I put a little arrow. I could say just three ones are three, plus one is four on three. So let's have a look at it. How many thirds are in one hole? So if you have one hole, I could draw it over here and go, you've got one, two, three thirds are in one hole, and there's another third. So we started with halves, we ended with halves. We started with thirds, we ended in thirds. Now it's the annoying part. I know I can multiply both of these. Now, if I multiply them both by two, I can get rid of that one. If I multiply them both by three, I can get rid of that one. The shortcut is, what does two and three both fit into? And two and three both fit into six. So if it isn't too much for your brain at the moment, if I multiply that side by six, I multiply that side by six. Could take my time and make a video a lot longer and go through that we multiply by two and then we multiply by three. The nice shortcut is if we multiply by six. If these were two and a five, so if we had a two and a five, we'd multiply by 10. If I have a three and a four, we'd multiply by three, four is a 12. And here's where the trap comes. Nice simple one though, two and four. I can multiply by eight if I want to, but then you've got more work to do. That's okay if you want to. On that one, we could multiply by four, or we can multiply by eight. And by the way, any of these, you can multiply by bigger numbers if you want to. Now, here's where the trouble comes. How do people do six times three on two? I do nag them out that I wrote this up here. I wrote it on the top, or I wrote it as a numerator. 
I made it try to look like a numerator. Because when people are really stuck on fractions and they say, yeah, I get this, I can multiply by six, and they're stuck on fractions, they're given one rule. The times in which happens over and over again for multiplication, and that is multiply the tops and multiply the bottoms. So the tops are the six and the three of 18. And I could nag about what's going on here, but the bottom is just two. Six threes are 18 and the bottom is two. There's so many other things I can do, and I'll do that in a moment in case you prefer that way of thinking. Four sixes are 24, and the bottom is three. Now you're doing it. Um, for some people, a fairly annoying division. Half of 18 is nine. Three into 24, if you're having trouble with that, still three, six, nine, 12. I'm doing my threes, three times tables. So that are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, that's eight lots of three. So how many times does three go into 24? And that's eight times. And the best answer is nine and eight. Now, for those who want to fast forward, there is another way of thinking about it. And I'm going to show you that. And I've named about this in my fraction video. Any top and any bottom can cancel. And when we talk about cancel, we're going two into two goes once, and two into six goes three, as long as it's a numerator with a denominator, or a top with a bottom when you're multiplying. So what's left here? Three times the three is just nine. We could write nine over one, but nine over one, I'll write it for now. Nine over one is just nine. So we go to this one here. Three into three goes once, and three into six goes twice. So you can cross out any top and bottom your and denominator when you are multiplying or when it's directly above and below each other. Four twos are eight, so that's an eight on one, and we're just left with the same answer of nine to eight. Now, this one's actually easier than that, because all we've got to do is jump the decimal twice. Now, a lot of people go, yeah, that's easy. I'm actually multiplying by 100, but let's not talk about that for a second. Just jump the decimal twice. And as I've said in the previous question, some people have to put 0 0.0 and maybe put a bunch of zeros in there. It doesn't matter if you put extras. So if I jump the decimal twice that way, I jump the decimal twice that way. By the way, if you got me stuck and you went this way and you wrote the answer down, you're just going to make it worse and worse. So what we're ending up with is a 4 on this side and an 800 on that side. And that's what mucks people up, how to go 4 into 800. I'm going to go over to here and I'm going to say again, just like I learned in primary school and a lot of people, it's amazing how many people in year 11 and 12 forget this or say they never learnt it. 4 into 8 goes twice, so 4 and 4 is 8. 4 into 0 goes 0 and 4 into 0 goes 0. So if you can't see that in your head, you can always write that down there. So we've got now 4 into 4 goes once and 4 into 800. Now here's the other way if you don't want to think like that. 4 into 8 is twice and it's got two zeros. Now the big one, the mixture, decimals, fractions, and the one that's not. This one's not too bad. In some ways, I should have maybe made a worse one. I've got that 2.4. For a lot of people, they could obviously write 1.5. Now, if I did the same question, I made it one and a third, we've got a problem. Because we've got decimals and fractions. Like this question, we've gone worse. But for the moment, I'm just going to keep it as that. And if we have a look at it now, we've got decimals, so that decimal moves once, that decimal moves once, and that decimal moves once. And if you want to put the point zero there, that helps. And what are we left with? Left with 24, we're left with a 15. Remember the decimals, it's almost like I could rub that out and say now it's 24. I could rub that out now and say it's 15. And I could rub that out now and say that's 100. Now it's a simplifying of that, and that's pretty yucky to simplify. This is typical of what we'll do to people on test, make the numbers horrible and see if people can get it done. And they might even be allowed to have their calculator. Now, if I looked at the three of these, this is even. That means I can halve it if I wanted to, but it wouldn't be an advantage if I halved that. That's even, so I could halve it. They go, no, well, that's no good. So if we went divide by two, that's out. We don't want to do that. Next one is three without going too long. I can, that one I can go, there it is, 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24. I can divide that by 3. I can divide 15 by 3, but I can't divide that by 3. So divide by 3 is out. And if divide by 2 is out, divide by 4 is out. Next one is 5. I can divide that by 5. I can divide that by 5. So I can't, well, I can't divide that by 5. And really at that point in time, we know that these are in the smallest possible numbers that they can be written in that can't be simplified to the whole numbers. 
There's nothing more we can do with that question, and that's actually the answer to the question. I hope you're enjoying it. If you are, I hope to see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.